Good afternoon, and welcome to this celebration of Eucharist. I'll ask you to sit down for the moment. Today is a special day, and on the 26th of October in 2005, the United Nations adopted a resolution which calls for governments to mark this day, the third Sunday in November each year, as World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims. And around our Basilica today, you have the people, they are the, the first responders and people who work with road traffic accidents. And it's an opportunity for us to pray for people who lost their lives in road traffic accidents, as well as giving thanks to the first responders and people who care for them, whether on the road or in a hospital and so on. And we know any accident, it is life-threatening, life-devastating and so on. So at the beginning of this Mass, Frances Mitchell from the Mayo County Council, she is the coordinator for road safety. Frances will come and talk to us and explain about the symbols which will then be carried to the altar. Inspector Tiernan is bringing up a guard the house. On guard the Shikona, carry out such important work every day. This hat is a symbol of their visibility on our roads. Bridget of the HSE Ambulance Service is bringing up a stethoscope to symbolise the vital medical care provided by our ambulance men and women every day to those involved in road traffic collisions. They are the first to attend to the injured and provide life-saving interventions. Peter, representing the fire service, is bringing up a fire helmet, highlighting the important work carried out by Mayo Fire Service and fire services across the country on a daily basis. We remember today the bravery and dedication of all of our emergency services. Joanne and Fanula from the Road Safety Authority is bringing up a copy of the Rules of the Road. We all share the roads and must remember to obey the rules of the road at all times to keep ourselves and other road users safe. Thank you, Francis, and thanks to all the people in the emergency services who provide for us. I think at the beginning of the Mass, let's say thank you to them. We give them a round of applause. Thank you. So if you wish to stand, and we begin our Mass, our Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So we give thanks in this Eucharist always, and then we ask ourselves, how are we living our lives in relation to God with other people? And especially today, all the things that we use on the road and so on, do we care about other people or is it just ourselves? The intention of the Mass is for Sally Riley and Nancy and Michael Murphy. It's an anniversary Mass. And there are people from the parish who were taken to Beaumont Hospital during the week because of accidents, and we are praying especially for them. We pray for Nikki Cunyon and Alan Donnellan. We bring our own intentions to this Mass. As we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only we got the Son. Lord God, love of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you will honour the Lord, you will honour the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy you that is the creator of all that is good. And we pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We sit and we listen to the readings, very much reminding us it's the end of the church's year, and we are reminded of the end of the world and destruction and so on, and how we are preparing ourselves for it. Our first reading is from the prophet Daniel. At that time, Michael, who was the archangel, will stand up the great prince who mounts guard over your people. There is going to be a time of great distress, unparalleled since nations first came into existence. When that time comes, your own people will be spared. All those whose names are found written in the book of those who lie sleeping in the dust of the earth, many will awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting disgrace. The learned will shine as brightly as the vaults of heaven, and those who have instructed many in virtue as bright as stars for all eternity. The word of the Lord.
at your right hand, happiness forever. Our second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. All the priests stand at their duties every day, offering over and over again the same sacrifices, which are quite incapable of taking sins away. Christ, on the other hand, has offered one single sacrifice for sins, and then taken his place forever at the right hand of God where he is now waiting until his enemies are made into a footstool for him. By virtue of that one single offering, he has achieved the eternal perfection of all whom he is sanctifying. When all sins have been forgiven, there can be no more sin offerings. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after the time of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will lose its brightness, the stars will come falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then, too, he will send the angels to gather his chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the world to the ends of heaven. Take the fig tree as a parable. As soon as its twigs grow supple and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. So with you, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the very gates. I tell you solemnly, before this generation has passed away, all these things will have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But as for that day or hour, nobody knows it, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, no one but the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So road traffic Sunday, and I suppose the question that goes through my head is when will they ever learn? And it's not about them, it's about us. When do we ever learn? And the gospel says about take the fig tree as a parable, when you see the signs, when it loses its leaves, you could say that autumn and winter is there, and then when the leaves come back again and you're talking about getting ready for the summer. And Jesus says, you see the signs. And I then ask myself, is he for real? Do we see signs? And I look at all the signs on our roads and we talk about being careful and being alert and being mindful, knowing that the vehicle or whatever we are using 
that it's there for our purpose to keep us safe. So the speed limit, if it says 100 or 120 or 50 or 30, that is not a suggestion, it's a code of conduct to say you do not go over that speed limit. And I think there's a lot of other signs that we can talk about in our own self of how we, I suppose, travel each day. And there is a poem by an American poet, Mary Oliver, and I was reading it during the week and I thought, how apt when Jesus says, this generation. And we can always say, are we learning? And the poem writes, or the poem says, we will be known as a culture that feared death and adored power, that tried to vanquish insecurity for the few and cared little for the penury of the many. We will be known as a culture that taught and rewarded the amassing of things, that spoke little, if at all, about the quality of life for people, other people, for dogs, for rivers. All the world in our, in our eyes, they will say, was a commodity. And they will say that this structure was held together politically, which it was. And they will say also that our politics was no more than an apparatus to accommodate the feelings of the heart. And that the heart in those days was small and hard and full of meanness. There's a lot of words, but what it's saying about what's in my heart. And I, as a road user, how do I approach that? And am I thinking about other people? And it comes up as a message in the car sometimes, think of other road users. But that's not for me, I'm in a hurry. I'm full of stress and tiredness and I want to get on with my life. Why doesn't everybody get out of my way? Don't they know I'm in a hurry? And what I'm in a hurry for? So as a Christian, I try to look everything I am doing, as I already said, glory to God in the highest and peace to people on earth. And if I'm driving and I'm probably not even thinking again that the pedestrian crossing, that is for crossing, not just anywhere. Or if I'm cycling and the red light says that for me is to stop also, not to break the red light. The amber lights tell me to prepare to stop, not can I break the red light. And all of these things, they are the signs that I can look at how do I give glory to God by my own actions. And St. Paul would say to us, over all things put on love, may peace reign in your hearts, always be grateful. And he says, whatever you are doing or saying, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. So if I'm getting into my car, I'm doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving praise to God. So that means I'll slow down, put on my seatbelt and get ready, have the mirrors right, etc. Simple things. If I'm out walking in the evening, wear the high vis jacket, be seen, etc. It's not just about me, it's about how I mind other people. And that is ethics. Being ethical in all my dealings with others. What is ethics? Ethics, I say, is a simple thing for me, that whatever I am doing, if everybody else in the world did the same thing, would that world be a better place? And I can ask myself that if I'm speeding on the road or trying to break red lights or whatever. If everybody did that, where would we be? And from ethics, there's morality. And it is moral for us to have the moral values of trying to help other people. So speeding under the influence of drink or drugs, breaking red lights, using mobile phones, texting, being stressed out, being tired. The signs are there every day. Do not do that. And it is, <clears throat> as I say, the code of conduct. And I'm also thinking ethically and morally, if I wanted to be treated the way that I'm treating others, that is a good judgment for me, how I live my life. And already in the readings today, and the Mass is saying, there is destruction, there is death, we don't know what's going to happen today. And we know that when there are accidents, and accidents is an unfortunate incident that happens unexpectedly and unintentionally, which results in damage or injury. We know that. That's an accident. But if I'm the cause of an accident because of my lack of preparation, then I think I'm in an area of immorality and being unethical. 
So when I say to Jesus, as the choir were singing, that we are talking about, you will show me the path of life. The Alleluia verse was saying, stay awake and stand ready because you do not know the day or the hour. And that reminds me, stay awake and be on alert when I'm getting into my car, crossing the road, cycling my bicycle, coming to a red light, stay alert, the signs are there. So when the gospel talks about the loss of life and destruction, it's talking about the end of the world in that sense, but how often our own world ends just in a flash, as the ads on the television would say, one minute, one second, without being alert. Take the fig tree as an example, and I'm using that as an example of reading the signs on the road, road safety, traffic. When you think of the people today giving up of their time to care for others who might be needlessly not even thinking of others, not even thinking of themselves. So the fig tree as an example, and I love the first Psalm, and that talks about a tree, and it says, happy indeed is the person who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And I'm saying my delight is in the law of the roads, road safety. And if we are pondering the law and the code of conduct every day, then we become alert. The Psalm says, the first Psalm, he is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves shall never fade. I think we know ourselves in this area in the last year, the N17, there has been more and more accidents and loss of life. And it is awful to think of that just in one second. And at the end of this Mass, we'll be told again, going out to love and serve the Lord. That's everything we are doing, as St. Paul says. Everything is for the glory of God. Be on the alert, be mindful. Travel safely. Speed is not for everybody. It's not even for me. Breaking the road limit, etc. First responders, thank you. Thank you for looking after us. I suppose in one sense, at the beginning of Mass, we say sorry to God, sorry to other people for my stupidity. But I'm saying to the first responders, sorry for all the cause and the pain that we bring to you all the way that we carry your own daily lives. And I think the second reading is saying that the priest comes out day after day after day to offer a sacrifice to try to help other people. The emergency services day after day are faced with that. We could help them by being on the alert ourselves, preparing properly and doing everything as a prayer to give glory to God. Let us stand, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, a Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Representatives of the emergency services, the first responders, will come to read the prayers of the faithful.
Lord, we remember those who have lost their lives in our roads. May their souls find eternal peace. Comfort their families and grant them the strength to endure their grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, give us strength to face the challenges of life. Equip us with courage and perseverance, and may we always rely on your support. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in the caring professions. May the Lord protect them in their work, and may that work be appreciated. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are ill, isolated, lonely, or in trouble. May we offer help when needed, and may the Lord grant them his healing love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all our own intentions, our needs, and thanksgiving. May the Lord grant us what we need at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, our healer, we bring before you those who are suffering. Comfort the sick, heal the wounded, and restore the broken. May your love surround them and give them strength and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And being gathered here in the Basilica of the International Eucharistic and Marian Shrine, we are reminded again of Eucharist to say thanks to all the people who do care for us, and thanks to the Lord for the privilege of our own faith. And the whole thing of being in communion with God is being asked to be in communion with one another. This is our common union of caring for each other. I'm not going through life alone, but with other people, so I have to think of others. So we come together in this shrine and we ask Our Lady of Knock to pray for us, to pray with us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, help us to lift up our hearts this day. Help us to be more mindful of how we live our day Help us to be careful in how we use all the gifts that you have blessed us with. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. The offertory collection will now be taken up and thank you for your donation.
Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. We pray, Lord, that what we offer today on this altar and with our own lives, that it may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness as we care for others. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and you set us over the world in all its wonder to come in your name as we follow Jesus, your Son, and being guided by his Spirit. May his Spirit be our empowerment as we live each day the message of love. And so when hearts uplifted, we come with the angels and saints to offer you our hymn of thanksgiving and praise. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion, we may be gathered into one in unity and peace, gathered by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all your people. 
Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, that we too may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours forever and ever. We come together, we stand as members of God's family. We just think again, no matter what we are doing, we are trying to do the will of God, and especially in the context of how we travel the roads each day and what we are doing. Is this God's will, the way that we carry it out? Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await a blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously, grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We have our candle here in the altar, which is a symbol, again, of the light of Christ being enlightened. And we are praying for all those who have died in road traffic accidents but it's also a sign of enlightenment for peace in our world. Let us just invite the spirit of peace into our own hearts, and then if you wish to turn to your neighbour to offer a sign of peace. Our Holy Communion, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. With people joining us on live stream, we pray, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you. I desire to receive you in my soul. If at this moment I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there. I'm entering into communion with, with you by uniting myself with you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. People in the Basilica for Holy Communion, if you wish to, to receive the gluten-free host, let us know that. If you're not receiving a sacrament and would like to receive a blessing, just cross your arms in front of you.
If you have any religious objects to be blessed, you can get them ready now. Almighty Father, bless the medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed. And I bless them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we have listened to your word. We have received you in Holy Communion. We are guided by your, by your Holy Spirit. We will pray that we will give an authentic Christian witness by everything that we are doing and saying. As St. Paul tells us, whatever you do, good or bad, has its influence and it affects on other people. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Thank you for coming to celebrate this Mass with us today. Thanks especially to the emergency services, the first responders, all the people who care for others. We very much appreciate what you are doing. Thanks to Una and the choir for singing and playing the music and helping us to Alanis, the altar server, everybody involved, the Eucharistic ministers and so on. So I pray that we would have a good day and that as we know we are carrying Jesus in our hearts, we open our hearts and let that be our guiding light in how we live our lives today, especially on our roads. Tashtil Gamal be Kormak. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Oh